Hey Adobe Live, I'm Veronica Belmont. I'm a product manager and evangelist on the Adobe Spark team. We're here at Adobe Max, of course, and I'm very excited to speak with Dr. Monica Burns. She is a former New York City public school teacher and current, let me see if I get this list right. We've got author, podcaster, speaker, presenter, mm -hmm. design expert. <laughs> what have I missed? Well, I'm just so excited to share all the student examples and the That's education right. pieces really mm -hmm. today is um, something that I'm really excited to dive into with you. Yeah, how has your Max been so far? Wonderful. Yeah. Just really magical, magical event, so much inspiration, lovely connections, so mm -hmm. really great few days here. Now this is really interesting for us because we talk in Spark a lot about our, our user base is really like young creators, social media marketers, uh, people who are designers that are working with teams on the social media space. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think often enough we talk about the education portion, which is a huge part of our audience. And that is something that you are hyper-focused on. Oh, and congratulations on your book anniversary. Oh, thank by you. The way. Thank you this week. Yep, our one-year book anniversary. <laughs> Excellent. Um, but yeah, let's dive in a little bit. Um, I'm not sure how much of the audience is familiar with Adobe Spark, um, but we can walk through it, show some examples, ways Absolutely. that you've integrated into your workflow. Um, so yeah, please kick it off. By the way, we launched folders recently, mm -hmm. and this is the most incredible example <laughs> of folder organization that I think I've seen so far out in the wild. Thank you. Well, I love it. And it's, I don't really have a top secret folder here, but I was showing it off to a group <laughs> and it, it defaulted as top secret. So no, nothing hiding behind there. But yeah, love everything in here and excited to share some things from the blogger side of things, but the student creation piece too. Of course. So would you like me to just take you on a quick tour? Or Absolutely. Think, okay, great. So here I am at spark.adobe.com. For those of you who are excited about the EDU space, all you have to do is add that slash edu and it will take you out to an education page with even more examples and lots of implementation strategies. So really a great place to go to yourself or to share with someone else um, if you have spent time in it before but they're interested in diving in from the education side of things. So whenever I want to create, whether it's a video, whether it is a post or whether it is a page, I'm usually getting started right here on the web or jumping between my different devices. So everything really living behind that plus sign. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Whether I am searching for a template, I'm looking for some inspiration to get started. If you haven't used this before, you can even type in edu and get some education specific examples, which is wonderful. Um, but I often head over to start from scratch mm -hmm. to create something like a video um, with a group of students. And so prompting them right away to choose a title for their video. One I often like to share is all about firma composting. Oh, is what I typically like to talk a about. A new term I've not, never heard before. Not a word we use every day, but as a classroom teacher, I worked in a classroom where yes, we were pretty tech heavy, but we also composted with worms. So our verma composting. Excellent. And so here you can see all of the story templates. Um, of course, you can start from scratch, which is what I'll take you through today. But if you are in a classroom looking to get started and you're always doing biography projects, a hero's journey is a really great place to start. Right? Leverage some of the wonderful work that's already happening in your classroom with research and storytelling, and then this can really help take it to the next level. I'm going to go in and start from scratch though, mm -hmm. um, which will pop me right into my creation side of things. Into the editor, yeah. And so I think it's a good it's a good point to point out that Spark is available on the web, but we also have three separate iOS apps, one for Spark Post, Spark Page, and Spark Video. Spark Post also available on Android, but all of that really comes together on the web where you can have that central location <laughs> for creating content. Yeah, and having worked with students where they don't necessarily all use Chromebook number four every day, right? <laughs> right. They can just grab whatever device they want log back in, jump right in where they left off, and it really makes the classroom management component mm -hmm. of using technology a lot more seamless in a classroom as well. And Spark is available for free for education. That's another another big point to mm -hmm. make. Um, so it's available as part of your Creative Cloud subscription or your photography plan. But if you are an educator, if you're a student, we have EDU SKUs that are available to be rolled out for your district or school. Absolutely right, and I work with a lot of schools that have gone through that process and are jumping right in with all of their students. And so one thing to point out before we get started with our composting example is that my logo is right down here at the bottom of the screen. So I use the branding features, which we can talk about, and I have some examples to share as well. But I am going to turn off that branding for us and turn off my call to action, which I love using as a blogger. Right. Um, but for this student example, I'm ready to start a little bit more you know, from scratch here. So I can choose again with that plus sign to get ready with a 
um, title slide. So there's my Verma composting <laughs> right there. It really rolls off the tongue. Oh, exactly yeah. right. So I can go ahead to my theme. My branding themes are there. But since we are talking about worms and dirt and earthy things, I might go ahead and choose something a little bit more green Ooh, <laughs> or great. thematic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so themes are interesting because all of your motion graphics, the, the text, the color, it's all built into each variation of the theme. So you can really play around with different versions, but um, those are bu built in. So I think that, that makes it really easy, especially for students to just get started and feel like they can create a really like high level, really professional almost looking project just mm -hmm. by clicking on different themes. Absolutely. And the discussions that you can have with students around this are more than just which one's your favorite or which one is pretty, but what are you trying to get across to your audience? What kind of mood or tone do you want to connect them with? And so once you have whatever you want on your slide, you can hold down and record your voice. So. I can't wait to tell you all about composting with worms, keeping it short and sweet there. And then moving on to some of the other options, bringing in video, if I have video saved to my device, more text, I might pull in a photo. Now I do have a photo of worms right here saved on my computer, my very own uh, old school compost bin with a photo that's not as crisp as our iPhones nice. take now. <laughs> you can see a thousand worms right floating in there. But if I wanted to show off a picture that might look a little bit nicer on this big screen, right, I could also go in and search for a photo as well. So, Do you think there's going to be worm photos? In well, I have to say photos. that when I search for worms, my favorite ones are the more colorful ones, which paint a little bit of a better <laughs> picture, at least when I'm projecting to a large group of yep. teachers and showing them. Um, that's usually one of my favorites to show off, at least when you're talking, get, getting someone excited about the worms. But the layout gives me an option to even go side by side. So I could pull in some text, I could pull in another photo, and giving students this number of options is really great for keeping them laser focused on content, but giving them enough room to be creative at the same time. I noticed a comment in the chat, um, Pamela says, why does Spark intimidate me? And I'm really curious to hear why it intimidates you, and hopefully we can get in there and figure out ways to like, it's supposed to be dead simple. So mm -hmm. we are happy to walk you through yeah. any particular aspects of that that might make you nervous, but we're happy to happy to continue that conversation. Mm -hmm. But yeah, let's keep showing some more of these yeah. layouts. And when it comes to that simplicity, for me, that plus sign, the add, add, add is really grounding for reminding myself of, okay, this is a good spot to put in content. I want to plug in something here. And one of my absolute favorite options is the icon. Yes. And the, you'll see this, of course, across um, when we jump into posts in a little bit as well, but it already knew I was searching for worm pictures, which I love that a smart <laughs> technology there. Um, so if I want to convince someone, if you're talking about different types of writing techniques with students, and you want to convince them that um, composting is a great idea, you might choose some of these friendly worms to keep going. Whether you decide to record your voice on a slide or even have it linger for a few seconds, uh, I've seen students you know, all the way from elementary to high school, you know, decide that they want to talk, talk, talk about what they're doing. And others want to put more text on the screen with the caption option. So it gives that variety for students to use their voice, however that might sound or look, to share a little bit about their learning. Yeah, it's interesting because um, in the social media world, we usually say like 15 seconds to 30 seconds is like the sweet spot for video content, mm -hmm. um, just because you have just so little amount of time to really grab someone's attention. But for the education space, you get a chance to really kind of let it breathe a little bit more and, and give the kids some more time to like to test it out and play around. Um, and another note is that when they do record their voice, it's going to make that slide exactly fit the length of the, nar the narration, so they don't have to worry about setting ins and outs and really like going into more deeper editing. It just mm -hmm. does it automatically. Yeah, and one thing that when it comes to that kind of longer experience that we might think about as quick social video production that I know I do more of when I'm in a blogger mindset. In blogger right? mode, yeah. In blogger mode. Um, with something like this, what's so lo lovely is that students can turn their computer Computer, send a link, share it with a peer, share it with their teacher, and then they can update that same project, right? republish it so that it uses all the feedback that they've gotten from someone else. So you can really dive into some of those components that we know are so important, right? having kids share, having them talk about the process, and then bring that into a cleaner published piece. Excellent.
So up here at the top of my screen, um, I do have the option to invite someone in. New feature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. New right? feature alert. So I can invite someone in if I want them to jump into the project, kind of hand it off to them, um, or use mine as a template. So if I've made one and they want to copy it, then they can do that as well. I have the option to download, um, which is great if you're downloading it as an MP4 file or you have the video file. I'm going to just X out and jump on to the next one. But I do like that download option because it gives kids lots of ways to share. Mm -hmm. So in the K-12 space, you might have kids that are publishing that file um, to Google Classroom, to Seesaw, right, to a content management system that they typically use as a workflow anyhow. Yeah. So keeping it as a file is really nice, especially if you have kids that you're not ready to publish online or globally with them and you can keep them offline that way but then there's of course the option to share um, with the link and then you can actually connect it to Google Classroom right away right yeah having that 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 direct integration I think is really convenient for teachers to not only publish like which projects they're working on mm -hmm. and, and enable students to, to like hand in their assignments that way, it, it makes that workflow really convenient. Yeah, and what I like about it is you can leverage those workflows you're already using. It's not another thing or another way to share or another process um, to introduce. You can really connect it to what's already happening. Right. So I'd love to show some student examples yeah, that I do. have here. Um, so let's jump over here to the Hunger Games. This is an example that I love sharing. I stumbled across it doing a Twitter search, connecting with different teachers, and then I got a chance to meet Leo's teacher last year, Jesse, and hear the whole story um, behind it. But this is a quick um, trailer that really paints a picture of what you can do, especially with some of those awesome icons. Sandy. This book takes place on a continent once called North America. Do we hear audio on that? It is now called Panda. Iffy. Characters. Let's see. Katniss. Katniss is a intelligent, heroic teenager who is handy with a bow and arrow. Prim. Oh, perfect. Prim is Katniss's little sister. Thank you. Mm -hmm. She is kind and sweet. Gail. Gail is Katniss's hunting partner. When it comes to trapping animals, he can trap almost anything. Mm -hmm. Peter. Peter is a strong young man who has always secretly had a crush on Katniss. Plot. District 12 is one out of the 12 districts that create panels. Today is a special day. Today is called the Reaper. Today, each district will send in two tributes, one boy and one girl, to participate in the annual Hunger Games, where they will fight to the end <laughs> in the game. Back in District 12, Katniss's little sister, Prim, has been chosen out of random to participate in the Hunger Games. Katniss, Prim's older sister, instantly volunteers. Soon after, Peter Murlach, who has always been extra nice to Katniss, gets chosen to participate in the Hunger Games. Nobody volunteers. What will happen next? You will have to find out. And so what I love about this example, right, is we have all of these components in here. Um, here's another one all about sea turtles. Um, we'll talk a little bit over it while it plays. This video is called Sea Turtles. Oh, but it's so cute. Sea and you can see the images here as opposed to the icon. So really a lot of flexibility. How did, so this is something that's really fascinating to me because we'll let it play as we chat a little cool. bit here. Um, I was really impressed with that last one because this is something we've been talking about a lot in our workshops at Spark here at Max is that video is super important and really is engaging, but you don't need to have video in order to make video. Love and it. Mm -hmm. I think that is so so key because I think people are like, oh, well, I don't really, I'm not a videographer, I'm not, like I, we all have video devices, but even then it still feels intimidating when you have to make like a professional kind of looking product. But pictures, words, icons from the noun project, mm -hmm. like all of these things combined, even with the, the narration or not with narration, yeah. like come together and, and can make a video that's still gonna be eye grabbing and, and informative. Absolutely, and so if we come back in here, even into the project, with both of those pieces, whether it's a light and bubbly, here's all the things I know about sea turtles, or it's a more serious, here's the Hunger Games and why you should read it. Yeah, that was intense. Um, right, kind of intense. <laughs> <laughs> um, the music is really wonderful too, mm -hmm. right? So all of this music 
component is built in, having conversations with students about theme and about tone and all of these things that we know are so crucial and they they see as they go out into the world and consume content anyhow, right, here's an opportunity for them to have a conversation about what it looks like in action with their audience in mind. Right. And all those baked in best practices too. I mean, I think that's what, what the themes really take a, a load off my shoulders for is I don't have to think about like keying in motion graphics or, or editing titles or anything mm -hmm. like that. It's just in those themes, I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, it's a really nice choice for students who um, may not feel comfortable getting in front of the camera or who are not ready um, to use something that's going to involve a little bit more time or support right now. Right? This is a wonderful way for them to get excited, share what they've learned, and really think about connecting with an audience as well. So I want to take us out as also our project will save automatically, which is lovely. I could open it up on my phone right now and keep working on my Spark video on the Spark video app if I wanted to to talk a little bit about Spark Page, which is the website creation tool. And this time I'm gonna start off showing you two examples and then we'll kind of go behind the scenes. So this is a wonderful example that I absolutely love to share. Uh, the Colorado River uh, by Ezra here. And so what we're looking at is, and I am just using my finger to scroll down the page on my trackpad, is the same sort of content, a similar organization that we would see in a traditional research paper, right? Go off, research this, this is the rubric, this is what I wanna see, right? All the things that we might see in a classroom. Right now we're looking at text organization that is more connected to what we would find on the web, the integration of images that a student can search for, um, the Glide Show, which is an absolute favorite, Right, giving all this context, pulling in the multimedia. I don't need to hire a drone, right? Ezra doesn't right. need to get this shot of the Hoover Dam, but when he finds it, he knows it's going to communicate that scale right, right away. So really powerful. And then I have another example from a high school student. Her teacher reached out to me on Twitter after a workshop I had done with them, and she created a page all with poems inspired by the color aquamarine. Whoa. So whether you have students that are applying for a creative writing summer camp or a scholarship, or they're just, you know, I don't say just as a small thing, but their simple purpose, right, mm -hmm. is to chronicle their learning over the course of the year. She's got all of her inspiration that she's linked out to with the wonderful button options, right? She can come down here and share images that she snapped herself or one that she's found with the Unsplash and Pixabay image integration and if I scroll all the way down to the bottom here you'll see that the credits of those images right she's pulled in right here as well so, that's really important for the education mm -hmm. side of things yeah yes and whether you're talking to a third grader about the importance of giving credit where credit is due or you are talking to a high school student about formatting in a particular way because you can customize this if you want to mm -hmm. right that becomes a really important piece for modeling best practices and just holding students accountable for this as an all the time thing that they're doing absolutely mm -hmm. I wonder if we can show that Colorado yeah. River example um, you sent it to me earlier and if we can get over to the phone here you get to see all of my things okay let me open <laughs> <I'm in> Chrome <laughs> And yeah, we just wanted to illustrate that this looks just as incredible on a mobile device as it does on, on the web. Um, I'm not sure if they can see the, the phone. There we go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so page is completely responsive. So anything that you create on the web is automatically going to be responsive in a mobile web browser. So all those same like effects that we have when we go through the different transitions, I can click on any one of these images and open it up and scroll through mm -hmm. like a gallery. And this is just really just like WYSIWYG editing. I mean, oh it's gosh. just, there's no, obviously no code involved. Mm -hmm. We can kind of, uh, we can show some of the editing process too in a little bit, but that just, you don't have to worry about creating things for, for the web. It just does it automatically, which I absolutely love. Very cool. Yeah, really, really powerful to be able to go from credits. one to another. Mm -hmm. And what you can see here too is, you know, you might have students working collaboratively in another space you already spend time in, like a Google Doc, for example, mm -hmm. or maybe it's in a different product. But if you are having students work collaboratively, right now they're ready to publish. They can just pull it right into Page and be ready to go. And so as I come back over here to my Spark. I'm going to go to the same plus sign as for my video before. Of course, if you're with students on an iPad, you'd pull up the Spark page app, but it would sync here too. 
So I'm going to go to start from scratch and then to web page. This is going to pull me into the header um, along with my subtitle, right? choosing pictures, and then all of the options to combine what you saw from both Abby's example with Aquamarine Marine and Ezra's example for the Colorado River, right, all coming together in this one spot. So really gives you some options. I should let you know, I notice you use the start from scratch functionality quite a mm -hmm. bit. Um, so the project that I'm working on internally is right on the main page, you're going to have an automatic start from scratch option. So you can jump right into that page project, a video project, uh, or whatever are the most popular uh, post formats. Nice. So those are going to be a little bit different experiences on EDU uh, versus social media marketing uh, segments, but it's going to be really fast and quick mm. to just get right into the work that you want to do. As someone who is in Spark all the time, right, creating content from a blogging perspective and then also with students and teachers, mm -hmm. I'm always ready <laughs> to hear all the new things, so really excited about that. So yeah, here I am ready to create my page. Now I could, if I wanted to, I'm gonna take another spin with us, but I could, if I wanted to, go ahead and copy and paste these paragraphs right in, use the notes that I put here with students when you're talking about vocabulary, brainstorming search terms or keywords is a really nice vocabulary connection, uh, as well as just problem solving to say, how can I find the perfect picture, right? I'm gonna take a, a spin from just the, you know, the vermicomposting piece since we've already learned about worms and talk about another one I'm going to polar bears. So if you are having students do a research project about any kind of animal or any topic, right, and like anything, it's an open-ended creation tool for them to share their learning. So they might put their name right underneath here as a quick way for someone to realize whose it is, mm -hmm. right? If they're publishing it with all their, you know, classmates each making one. Then again, with our plus sign, I can choose my one big photo from the background. A big and hero shot. Exactly. Yeah. And so I do not have a photo of me, you know, taking a selfie with a polar bear Dangerous. or something compelling, right? So I could go to find free photos and type in polar bears here. And I have a whole bunch that I can pick and choose from, right? Those so great. plenty to go off of right now. And so if I choose this one here for my background, and I'm so glad that you showed the um, mobile responsive piece because one of my favorite things to share is when I click on here and I choose my vocal point, right? Do I want this to look all the way at this part of the polar bear <laughs> when it pulls up on someone's phone? Polar butt, Right, I exactly. Yeah. <laughs> or do I want it to have a more of an exciting shot when I'm in that vertical format? I have a couple different options, right? Whenever so. I do examples, <laughs> I always make pages about dogs and I always put the focal point like right on the tip of their little black nose. Oh, I love and that's it. that's just so you get that, you know, whenever you're scrolling through you're always going to get that cute little adorable boop right mm -hmm. there. <laughs> right, and, and placing that emphasis, again, all conversations to have with kids and their wheels are going to start to spin. I'm mm -hmm. um, not only taking more ownership of what they're doing, but just making those connections when they become more critical consumers of content yeah. as well. Um, Patty in the chat was asking, like, what would be a business case for using Spark Page? Ooh. That's a fantastic question. Um, people are using pages internally, uh, especially at Adobe. Uh, so the stock team actually uses them for their bi-yearly reports nice. on what the stock trends are and sends that out throughout the company because it's such a great way of showing visual content, mm -hmm. um, especially with like beautiful high-res images. Uh, people use it for onboarding. Um, when mm -hmm. a new employee starts at a company, they get a Spark Page that has all the information they need yeah, for, for learning more. People use them for landing pages and microsites. Mm -hmm. um, people use them for newsletters. So they just attach the link and they're able to update that automatically with all sorts of like really great content instead mm -hmm. of necessarily embedding it into the email. So there's a ton of different kinds of use cases. Um, I think it just like the limit is your imagination at this point. But yeah. for education, I mean, reports and projects mm -hmm. are, are really fun to see. Oh yeah, and I know, I know I run a blog and so there's times where I want stuff on my blog page, but there's other times I want it to redirect to a Spark page, yep. right? And I even use it for Instagram with all of my Insta resources oh, are nice. all created. So right here I put, when people say link in your bio, right? There's me and a Grover and Elmo yesterday, but I've got my link in my bio. It pops right over. I did a bit.ly link, so it was a little bit smaller but these are all the links to everything I put on Instagram, right? So wow. it really just becomes how you want to use it. So right? you've made that like into your own link tree kind oh, of thing. It's exactly yeah. like link tree, except I like Spark so much. <laughs> and I want it to be the colors of my brand and all the branding pieces, right? And I want to be very specific with all the links and all the things so I can use the button tool, it'll pop you out to a blog post. So just like a student would combine all these features, I mean, I use it daily. Right? I've never seen that use case before, that's awesome. Oh. Very fun, yeah. It's one of my kind of go-tos because I can up 
updated on my phone also, mm -hmm. right? So even though I tend to be a little bit more web-based just with my personal workflow, it ends up being really great for me to say, oh, I do want to put this up on Instagram. I want to make sure the link is there. And I can even track the views and the analytics, which your kids might do. But for me, I'm just curious to say, who is actually going to that page <laughs> when mm -hmm. I say click the link right in your bio? So let's jump back out here to the polar bears. I could add in more photos, I can put in text, that same button, like my links, it could go out to another page, a video embed, so if I have a Spark video, so if students are making Spark videos, um, Vimeo or YouTube, they can embed it right in. If the video is somewhere else, make a button, right? You can link out to it somewhere else that way. And then our photo grid, our glide show, and our split layout. So this past summer I did some work at the Cooper Hewitt Museum on behalf of Adobe, um, helping students create pages and videos. And high school students use page as their anchor, and then they put a video for their All About Me. Oh, then yeah. Then they put all their one. content, right? Mm -hmm. So they really smashed all of these pieces together. So if I go here to text, I have the heading options for H1 and H2. So I might put in something like my intro right here, grab this, center the text hit my plus sign here, go to my text. Most likely your students would have a paragraph they've written somewhere else, maybe gotten feedback from someone else, and they could put in all that information, or they jump into bullets and they just put in their fun fact from all their research about polar bears, just keep going with their fun facts. And then with a, something like a photo grid, they could go back, same search term, and pull in some of those photos that they loved, but they couldn't decide which one to use <laughs> for their hero or their big image right up there at the top. So going down the page, it really becomes an opportunity for them to choose their own adventure mm -hmm. with sharing the story mm -hmm. of their learning. As a classroom teacher, you may give them a lot of structure. Maybe the first time you're going through and saying, I'm looking for those same five paragraphs, but you can pull in any multimedia that you want right after you've gone through that piece. You can use the same rubrics that you've always used right, before right, right. Um, and have that come in now with this more visual element and bring that into some of your conversations too. I did like that you had all the text like in a Google Doc or somewhere outside like to start with just mm -hmm. so you make sure you have everything you want to say and then it's really just about playing and figure out, figuring out how you want to position it, like how you want to integrate it with, with text or with uh, different styles of, of text and, and headers and mm -hmm. images. So once you get that down, that's always what I do is yeah. I, I write it out somewhere first and then I just start pulling pieces in to see where I like them and, and how best it fits. And if you do have a Google Doc with kids like this, right, you can grab your five paragraph essay and when you do paste it right here into Spark, it'll put that plus sign in between each paragraph. So it just prompts the kids to say, here's a break, what can you show here? What would be helpful here? Um, whether you're talking about calls to action in a high school business class and you want buttons placed strategically down the page, or you're talking to students about right, what it is that they're creating or they've made a collage and they want to take a picture of it mm -hmm. and add it here as well. Oh, Lisa says that she ran for school board and used it for mm -hmm. her campaign. That's amazing. Wonderful. Did you, uh, did you win? You have to, you'll have to let us know if you won. <laughs> we'll use you as a use case. I mean, we would still do that even if you lost because mm -hmm. that's, that's still pretty rad. So congratulations. <laughs> All right. So the glide show, I can't help but, I can't go anywhere without the showing the glide show. Of it's my absolute yeah. favorite, right? So you can choose one of these pictures, maybe of that polar bear swimming underwater for my background. Hit save and there we go, right? So I can put anything on top of this. Maybe it's a quote from a student after we went on a field trip to the polar bear <laughs> place or right at the aquarium or the zoo, a video that they created themselves, uploaded to YouTube, made in Spark video, put here. So lots of options. I'm just gonna put, to keep with our theme here, another fun fact right there, another all about one. polar bears. Yeah. So when I come back to the top, right, I see all of my stuff, it's spaced out, still in edit mode. I can go to preview. Because my branding set up, you'll see my logo pop up there. And then if I go and scroll down, everything is composed in a much more friendly way. Mm -hmm. And all of my credits for those wonderful polar bear pictures that I didn't take myself right, are right down here at the bottom. Yeah, that parallax effect that when you go through that glide show is, is so pretty. And you can actually do um, one thing to, to show, actually, if yeah. you go back into edit mode, is stacking three glide shows on top of each mm -hmm. other. This is yeah. one of my favorite things. Like If you're a big time photographer and you want a really easy way to create um, presentations of photos you taken uh, yeah that was a that was a DJ college joke you're right you got it Jimmy thank you thank you for recognizing me I'm still with the youths and whatnot whatever mm -hmm. um, but yeah doing a back-to-back -back, uh, glide shows 
is just a really beautiful way because we create all those transitions for you automatically um, and they just slide right together and it's really cool to see. Awesome, so let's look at these two now um, as I scroll down the page. So look at that there, right? Yeah. That transition between looking at the Poe River underwater, then above the water, right, right all the way down here. So yes, yeah, so share all of these pieces, it's so powerful. And one thing that I really love on Chrome, to escape mode there is the presentation option. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if I go, I'm just gonna come back to the top here and go into present mode. What's wonderful about this, and we, you know, we're talking education focus, but of course mm -hmm. in any kind of situation, if you have students who are presenting something, this is another option that's not a slide-based presentation tool that they can use, and then they have a link to share with the world, mm -hmm. right? If you are a if you're a teacher, or you're an admin running a family literacy night and you put all of the data into a Spark page, you show that presentation to everyone and they leave with a QR code they can scan later and mm -hmm. it goes to that link. So I'm just hitting the arrow button to advance. So moving through each section of the page just like I was moving through a slide-based presentation. Yeah. So really, really powerful. Yeah, we're using, uh, we have built in some design intelligence to figure out what the important parts are for each section um, and then figure out where to advance them for the next quote unquote slide. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's been really cool to see because it's nice because it's all web based. Oh, yeah. So you don't have to worry about saving out like a presentation mm -hmm. file. You don't have to worry about like, oh my gosh, I'm speaking at this conference and I don't have my presentation on my computer. I don't know why that would happen, but <laughs> actually one time that did happen to me because I was giving a demo um, of Spark mm -hmm. and I had a presentation built out in page and I was just gonna show it from my local computer and they didn't have the dongle to hook up my presentation mm -hmm. to the big screen. So what I did was I just borrowed someone else's laptop who had an older MacBook nice pulled up my presentation in Spark page yeah. and just was able to go on as normal. Oh and gosh. so that like kind of saved my butt. Oh yeah, and then everyone can take that link and mm -hmm. run with it, right? All the notes, all the everything. And one thing too that um, we showed in video, I do have my branded themes. So you saw it with my Instagram page, right? Yeah. I use my branded themes, right? The storybook theme might be better for a whimsical story all about polar bears and magic or something. Um, <laughs> like a little more compass. else, right, or you something. You a book report on the golden compass, that would be polar bears and magic. There exactly, you and you as a child, right, coming into a classroom could say, I know this book is about this and this is this theme makes more sense for this, right? Mm -hmm. They Kids know this, they can have that conversation with you um, and it updates you know, really quickly as well. There's the um, feature for collaboration up here at the top and then the share button where you can print out on Chrome. So having it in PDF, which is a nice option for students who might want to share their work offline or the same publish and share link that we saw with video. And I love the ability to update the link, which yeah. you can do on video as well. Yeah, we've had a lot of questions in the past about like why do you need to update the link? And there's actually a really good reason for it. It's because if you're making changes and something happens that you don't want mm -hmm. to happen or you're making changes, you do something accidentally, right. you want that published link to stay the same until you're ready to commit those changes. So just think about it that way. It's committing those changes, pushing them live, so that way if you make any changes in the editing thing, you don't want those to immediately be reflected mm -hmm. wherever you've shared out that link to. Right, as you're typing, as you're working, yeah. right? I totally get it, and I love that action item as well, right, for students who might say, oh, you know, I'm gonna change this to amazing polar bears, mm -hmm. right? As soon as it um, saves, I can go back to share, and now you're gonna see that update link button. So I do have to manually decide that I am gonna take that feedback from my peer, make the change on my page, and update the link, but if kids put that into a Google Doc with everyone's shared link on the page, um, they can still have it there um, ready for other folks to look at too. And late breaking news, congratulations to Lisa for winning that <laughs> board seat. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Thanks to Spark Page and, yep. all the, and all the things, right? So, of, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Great, so we've looked at page and video and they're both right here, you know, saved in my library. I could drag one, so maybe I'm gonna take this amazing polar bear and put it into my Going Green Club folder, right, and pull it in that way, which love folders, clearly, <laughs> as you can see here. Um, I didn't know you could drag and drop projects. <laughs> I seriously did not, like, I was like, oh my 
Is it gonna oh. work? What is she talking what about? What is she right? even doing right now? <laughs> yeah. I always do the move. I like click on the oh, menu yeah. in the in the little right, um, so I can go here there, and yeah. I can go to move. Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to drag stuff. I'm always trying to just <laughs> maybe it'll work. Maybe it'll work. Yep. So I could go here into the the three dots there. I still have my share. I could publish straight from here if I wanted to. Invite someone else, like we talked about before. Move it, rename it, download it, delete it. But the duplicate button is one I really love in schools as well. Not only because you might have a template that you're using all the time. So as a teacher, you might have a newsletter and you just replicate it mm -hmm. every month and fill in the new information for November, for December. But if you were making a movie, it might be a Burma composting movie. It might be another movie all about, I've got my family literacy night one here. I can go to my three dots and duplicate it. And when it pops up, you can see that I can decide, and I've, this is one that's already kind of, it's not gonna automatically know I wanna translate it into Spanish, so right. I wanna just get rid of that for you. <laughs> but I can duplicate it and I can say, you know what, I recorded that in English with all the info for our literacy night, but maybe I just wanna put this one in Spanish. I can duplicate that same project. It's not gonna translate it automatically or anything wild like that, although that might be a fun sneaks thing mm -hmm. to think about, mm -hmm. right? But the idea here is that I can duplicate that project and now I can go back into it. And yes, I recorded the whole thing in English, right? Speaking myself, but if I speak a different language or I bring in a native speaker in my school community who's comfortable speaking and sharing, they can listen to what I said in English and then re-record in Spanish. And then I can publish so it out cool. and share it with all the families that might feel like that's a better way for them to communicate with the information coming out of our school. That's so interesting that you did that because we um, we did a school day, uh, I think in Palo Alto, mm -hmm. and we were meeting with teachers there, and we had one of the Spanish teachers there, and he was doing the same thing. Awesome. He was showing um, Spanish words on mm -hmm. the screen in text, and then he would record them, or I think it was vice versa, yeah, uh -huh. English words in text, and then he would say them out loud in Spanish, and then they could just play and learn those verbs or learn those conjugations like just like in a row and have that video that they can keep going back to which I thought was really smart. I love that right and and even when we talk about the update feature right you might introduce the first five words of a vocabulary list then go in and add five more right mm -hmm. so there's just so much there and um, I think it's important to call out to when we talk about the power of student voice here right there's that duplicate button is one of, of my favorites but not to get sidetracked um, from post <laughs> so I'll go up here to my plus sign I'm gonna go, um, I could again go search for templates or take a look at some of the things here, even navigating just to graphics if I wanted to get some ideas. And then I can go to start from scratch, go to my graphic. Now I have my branding set up here. I use this for, I made my podcast logo from Spark Post. Right? I use it for all sorts of things so I can just click and be ready to go with slide decks and everything. Um, as a school, this is a really great opportunity for school branding to keep things consistent. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch for us for today. And this gives students an opportunity to pick and choose between different sizes. So. They might work with something like a square, especially if you've told them, hey, I'm gonna post a couple of these on our class Instagram page mm -hmm. or something that they're gonna resonate with a little bit more. You might choose from a more, you know, robust list. Very or social, you might go, yeah. yeah, very yeah. social friendly. Or you might even go to print. So you might know that your kids are gonna design their own book report covers and you're gonna print them out and staple them to the bulletin board, mm -hmm. which is great too, and you can have it here. So lots of options and I love the custom option too, which is yeah. great. Um, so let's go just to a square because everyone loves Instagram. <laughs> and I'll go to next, and it pre-populates with a whole bunch of fantastic, right? Just beautiful, pictures. yeah. Options to get started from. Mm -hmm. And I can go ahead and search just like I've been searching before. I am going to bring it back to the worms again. So we'll go ahead and put in our worms. I could choose one of these. I could choose a whole bunch, and it would turn it into a collage. Mm -hmm. I can change my mind later. <laughs> I'm gonna say we need we need more uh, options for worms. This, this is very cater caterpillar forward. It is a lot of cat. I know. I yeah. don't like to get too technical on it, yeah, right? Yeah, That's yeah. why. And I, plus, I just love the colorful worms when not everyone's worm happy like me. Yeah, you don't want to get like, <laughs> icky triggers right, in there. Right, right, especially if I'm presenting a full day and everyone's come back from lunch or something, right? I did a presentation once where I was talking about spiders and it was Ooh. a room full of like 800 people and I my graphic was just a giant spider. No. I got a lot of comments I would not that. like that either. So, you know, be, be conscious, know your audience. <laughs> know your audience. Right, I would not like that at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like that there is the smart text here um, where it's pulling 
pulling out colors for me automatically. It knows what's gonna look good. Sometimes I think of this as the artificial intelligence that's not scary robots taking over the world, but smart enough to know what's gonna look good, right, mm -hmm. with my picture here. So I can double click, and for students, there are so many things you can do with posts. You can make infographics, you can make exit tickets, which is what we'll do now. You could do some goal setting if you wanted to. So kids could say, this is my goal for the next decade as you're approaching 2020 already. Wish I right? had. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Not for the next 10 years, but for the upcoming for decade. For the upcoming okay. decade, right. <laughs> I was like, I can't think that far. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm, I know. It's scary stuff. And so lots of things that they can do here, even pulling a quote from a favorite book, something that they want to share that's more text, but then would have the image component. So if we are doing something that's more like an exit ticket or exit slip, a super popular best practice formative assessment strategy, you might have students share at the end of the day, what's something that you can compost? We've been talking about it all day. I really want to hear from you that you know something that we can put in the compost bin. So you might have students pull up a picture and then put in their text here. And they might say something like, bodies. I know, what's that? Where the bodies are buried. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. I know you can compost banana peels. You can tell I don't work with the student population very much. <laughs> so I can pull it in here um, and I can go ahead and add that to the page. You might have students, especially if they're gonna do something that's social sharing, like maybe they're gonna post it to Seesaw or post it into a book creator journal or something like that. I would suggest having them add a little bit more text and then put their name down here at the bottom. Um, you might do first name, last name. You might do a, you know their room number if you're doing something in the school. Like this is pretty fantastic. I'm really happy with how this looks, but I wanna show you off all the other features. And I can't take credit for how fantastic it is. I didn't choose any of these colors or any of the font or even you know the picture, right? So there are all these awesome templates right in here that are now built in. But I'm gonna head over to the design. So you can see there's some inspiration right here. This is making it super easy for kids to have a starting place which is really important for building that understanding of what goes really nicely together, what fonts pair nicely together, and just build something that's successful regardless of the content. Yeah, we really try to uh, just implement and incorporate a lot of design best practices into the design ingredients, mm -hmm. just so, yeah, like you said, you don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. And so I can also click on an element and have some options too. So I might go to the style wheel, which I love, because you never know what's gonna happen when you spin the wheel, and the kids love it too. And so they can go through, they can have it right here on their page, they might do it for both of them. Now, for as much as this has, you know, plenty of buttons to press, lots of wonderful choices, I've used this with six-year-olds. Um, so six-year-olds who were making five of these posts, one for each part of their first, then, next, next, finally story. They drew their own, in their own illustrations with markers and crayons. We took a picture of them their picture was in the background and they wrote their caption for each page, printed them out. I have a blog post about this I can point us to, um, but really just wonderful mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. So I have this here, if I'm happy with it, I can go to download, save it as a PNG, a JPEG, PDF, which is great if you're making posters with students. I'll go for JPEG, it'll start the download and you'll see it's gonna download straight to my computer. Now, just a couple other things. If I do wanna spin the wheel, awesome, but if I wanna tailor it, changing up the font, changing up the color. These are some of the branding options that I have built in. I also have the option to pull in icons. So yes, I put in banana peel, but I also know that you can compose an apple core. So maybe I'll get, hope to get some bonus points on my project here. Change the color. Maybe have it white so it pops out a little bit, which is great for any kind of infographics too. Mm -hmm. So you can have kids think about symbols and representation, it's all right here. And you saw me download this as a square, but what if you are planning this awesome lesson and you get an email before it starts from the PTA president that says, we're looking for more things to put on the school Facebook page. Does anyone have any student work examples, things that we can share? You know your kids have their photo permission and student work permission slip signed. <laughs> Very your important. Kid, right? all, yep. those, all the good things. When you're good to go, you can have your kids go to resize, choose that size that's gonna be just right. Maybe it is a Facebook post that you want them to choose. They can use this, I mean, this is pretty perfect. One touch resize. Right, one yeah. touch. I could go ahead and resize if I wanted to. Totally up to you. And if you know that's happening, right, you, depending if you're making things or students, if they have their own logos or things that they've made, I've got a logo for my brand, but also for just an imaginary school here. And I can go ahead and put that right in here. And then it becomes branded content. 
right away. We have a question from uh, Magma Monsta who says, is it possible to create more than one brand in Spark? So currently, no, there's just ability for one brand, but multiple brands is coming super soon. Mm -hmm. I've seen the designs, they look amazing. So that's really great for like design agencies yeah. or companies working on multiple different products or brands within their organization. Um, but right now, the workaround that we kind of recommend. I can show you, I'm, I've exactly got a workaround. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'll come back out here to the SP, but um, the workaround works. So I've been using it for some time. So this is my um, brand, manage brand page. So I have my logo, my core colors, my core font, but all right, I've written a couple books. So I have books that have different color palettes. I would love to have them in their own tab or however it's going to look right? yep. With, yep. with branding. I would love that. Um, I've got the book covers right here, right? Um, but if I want to, you can see that's that green and that's that purple. You don't see this on my website, but you see it on the cover of one of my books. So when I do all the branding for that, right, it's ready. Same thing here. You don't see yellow on my website, but my Spark book is, no surprise, right, black and yellow. Mm -hmm. So if I go into my folder full of Spark book stuff, you'll see that the, I, the logo that I use is actually the cover of our book and that all of those colors are ready for me when I'm in any of the tools. They're not gonna be the default ones, mm -hmm. um, but they're easy for me to access and I can do the HTML, you know, the color codes and all of that. Just real fast question about this. So I noticed that the book cover is on like a slightly tilted access. Mm -hmm. Did you import the logo that way so it's got like the transparent border around it so it just like automatically or do you rotate it manually? So I rotate it manually in this case. So I'm gonna come back out here to manage brand where you can see my logo right. So I have the PNG of it right here. It's a little mm -hmm. small, um, but I have that here. I have my podcast one, right? So I have it as a PNG. That way when I go into post, so even if I went into I'm going to grab one of these so you can see, right? I've got all of these post templates already. I'm going to create a project right off of this template, which is awesome and is an unbelievable time saver with the resize feature and all of the above, right? It's just a game changer for being more efficient with mm -hmm. all of this. So yes, um, this is not accurate. So please do not come to this event. <laughs> right? This is just the default here, yeah. um, just as a side note. So I'm going to go to add logo and I've got my spark book cover right here you're gonna see it floats right on top. I can grab it and I can spin it, right, at whatever angle. It's a high res photo, so even though it's coming in little as a logo, I can go practically full screen here mm -hmm. and you would never know that it was an icon and I can still, or I should say a logo, I can still add my logo here right. um, too. So it gives me a couple different options, right? I can pull in right, another book cover if I wanted to. It just depends on what I'm looking to layer right within this space. So I have the option to really right, get creative with how this looks. Um, there's even the opportunity to order these, right? So mm -hmm. all of those things you would hope for that you go searching for as soon as you start doing this, um, you'll be able to do as well. Yeah, I was wondering because if you were if you were a brand that had really strict brand guidelines mm -hmm. and like the logo had to be tilted at just the right angle yeah. or percentage, what I think you could do is actually import import it into like Photoshop mm -hmm. or Illustrator and then export it with a uh, border that was a transparent yeah. uh, transparent background. So when you imported that PNG file. Right. Always have. Yeah, it would always have the correct tilt and that might make it a little bit easier for consistency. I like that too, because I'm thinking here, if I go to rotate, um, right, yeah, I'm not getting, right, that would be the way I would probably want to do it there just to have it yeah. as well, so awesome. Cool, so we'll come back out here to the landing page. Um, so you can see where everything is saved. I'm still here in that folder. I can go here to the home button um, and jump back in and kind of see where everything is at already. A couple more examples mm -hmm. to share. Um, this is a school that I do some work with. They're fantastic. They use Spark for branding for their internal stuff. So they have a page with all of their content that they use over the course of different months. It's a pre-K learning center. And then as I scroll to the bottom of the page, you'll be able to see that they have their logo. What I love about this one is it is actually November now, right, somehow. Yeah. And so I shared this in October before they updated it for this year. Mm -hmm. And it had a different background because it was last year's November. And it's pretty much the same content, right, when I opened it up to show you all today, but that is there mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. So just to share with you um, some more kind of app smashes and things, I use Spark uh, posts for all of the graphics as a blogger, right? So if I click on this, I actually have a newer, just from last week, um, blog post all about using Spark with Padlet, where I share some stories from having kids go through a creative process. 
uh, where they were working on their videos. They uploaded it to Padlet, and just like we talked about with that update link, they turned their whole screen, showed a friend, they could click on the Padlet page to see everyone else's stuff, then the kids could go back in, make updates based on that feedback, and their link stayed exactly the same. So nice. lots of options there. but. So um, you're seeing Spark in that student way, but even here, if I go to click here to pin this post, I have it set up on my WordPress so that it will show a image. And this is just showing you a preview here. If I go into edit, oh, if I hold it down like that, you can kind of see mm -hmm. how it's actually a rectangle um, in the vertical as mm -hmm. opposed to the rectangle in the horizontal here. Oh. So I resize these images, and then when they come onto, and I don't think that one's up on my Instagram yet, but these I can make in three sizes. So every time I'm creating something and I like share it with Spark all the time, right, I can make it in the three sizes and it makes it really easy for social sharing. Now we were talking before we got started and I think we only have, we got about five minutes left, mm -hmm. but I wanted to showcase another new feature that we have yeah. in the Spark Post app, which is oh, yeah. text animations. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that you were having some fun with those earlier. Oh do you gosh. have any examples I you wanna share? I do have one example, let's see here. So I have to say that I do have a TikTok channel, but I only have <laughs> nice. two videos, and I think this only has one like because I sent it to someone on the Spark, on the Adobe Ed team to show yeah. them, and they were kind enough to like it. Um, but Spark Post on mobile um, gives you the opportunity to put a uh, video in the background mm -hmm. for that 15 second clip. And if you look here, you see mine is actually 50 seconds. So I made a handful of short video clips in post, mm -hmm. added them to Rush. Whoa, all right, I like this mashup. Exported yep. it out into my under one minute and then published it to my not too popular TikTok channel. That is <laughs> So amazing. let's go ahead and play it here. It might play the funny TikTok music, but we'll see. I think I put it on mute. So there's my video from my first day here at Max. I was on a hop on, hop off bus, so this is me looking up. Um, layered the text on top and post. Then I just have some snapshots, some pictures from um, the first day keynote, some video. This is all um, in vertical Photoshop video. Photoshop camera, right? nice. Super excited about Photoshop camera. So I've got a couple seconds that it shows of this. Um, then it will pop into a couple other um, short pictures, kind of going through slideshow mode, more things here as you see, kind of going through, I'll skip around a little bit. But as we get to the end, I then started to make some just static Spark posts, mm -hmm. had it last for a couple seconds and then finish off my video that way. So the big exciting one is really this first one. Um, having that video play in the background, have the text on top of it. This is huge for Instagram stories. So if you were following on my Instagram this week, I was using this in my short 15 second Instagram mm -hmm. updates. And it was really a wonderful way to layer text, caption when necessary, and just provide some extra content in addition to making things look beautiful and ready to consume. Yeah, so those are two new features that we just announced uh, very recently for Spark Post on mobile. Um, so that is text animations and also video as backgrounds. So you can now import video clips to use as backgrounds in Spark Post, mm -hmm. uh, which is great because yeah. it, you can resize those for all your different social channels. Super mm -hmm. popular for Instagram stories, um, but I think it's been a really fun way to add a lot more personality into your social content and I think fun for students as well. Oh yeah, I think I love the TikTok connection. Um, and I think it's really great now that you can actually share that straight from Rush. So if you are doing some app smashing, if you're excited about posts like I am, definitely something to check out. So in the three minutes we have left, can you tell us a little bit more about what you're up to and yeah. share out mm -hmm. about your books and your website and all that cool stuff? Absolutely. So my website is classtechtips.com. So I'll take you out to the landing page or the home page, I should say here, um, where I share lots and lots of favorites, lots of spark focused content for students too. Um, I have a podcast. So every Tuesday morning, under 20 minutes, sharing some ed tech favorites. There'll be some interviews coming up um, soon too, which will be a new thing. Um, so that's all the way up to episode 38 already somehow. Um, I have a membership site and club that I um, run as well, which has been lots of fun, just launched this year. And then I have a handful of books with some partnerships with different publishers, including 40 Ways to Inject Creativity into Your Classroom with Adobe Spark, written with the amazing Ben Forda. So great. So, so wonderful and excited to share that. Um, have it up here and Lacey. see. It's on, it's, on, it's on Amazon and on Kindle, which is always really nice if you're on the go like me and are, and are happy for eBooks. And sharing in all of these spaces, whether it's Pinterest with 
all of my pins created with different uh, spark posts. These look so good. <laughs> so you can see that I also play with the branding, right? I love the branding component, but I play around with it so they're not, not all identical to have some pieces there too. And then even my podcast um, logo is all made in Spark Fantastic. with the branding and all of that too. Monica, thank you so much for joining us. And if you want to learn more about Spark, head over to spark.adobe.com or download any one of our apps on the iOS store or Android for Spark Post. I'm Veronica Belmont. Have a great Max. Thank you for joining us.